All right. Good morning, everyone. We're going to continue with our media availabilities this morning here at Kentucky Speedway. And we've now been joined by Alex Bowman, driver of the number 88 Exalta Chevrolet. And Alex, um, we will kick off with a quick question um, for you. You just had an exciting announcement with your partner, Exalta. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that before we get started with questions? Yeah. Um, so we're going to have uh, the Exalta Eagles All Pro Teachers car at, uh, at Pocono. So really looking forward to that. We're going to have the uh, the the teacher that wins the the All Pro Teachers Award there, so that'll be special for her. Um, it's gonna be a lot of fun. So really looking forward to having the the Super Bowl champions on the car. All right, we'll go ahead and open for questions for Alex. If you have one, please raise your name and state your, or I should say, please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we'll start with Mark up front. <clears throat> uh, Mark Darrell, PRN. Alex, uh, you're on the bubble, man. Just what, talk about the. The pressures and, and what that deal is about right now for your race team as we close in on the end of the regular season. Yeah, there's definitely um, a good bit of pressure, obviously, that comes with it. Really, last week was probably the most pressure that, that I'll see until we get to Indy if things keep going the, the way they have. So um, definitely in the back of my mind, I was looking at the 95 car, leading laps, and some of the other guys up there, I was like, oh, this could get really bad for us. So. Um, Glad it, uh, it didn't turn into too bad of a night for us. Still got solid stage points and all that. So for me, it's just we got to keep putting races together, keep running solid top 10, and hopefully that, uh, that gets us there. Obviously, we would like to, to win before the cutoff, but um, I, I think we can do it on, on points, and we just got to keep moving in the right direction. We've kind of struggled to get stage points this year, and that's really put us farther behind than, than I think we would be if we got stage points of how we finished. But... Um, we'll just keep working at it, and I think we can make it. No, you're always thinking win first, but um, sometimes, you know, we, we've obviously been off of where we want to be, and sometimes you don't have that opportunity, and you just got to be smart and not put yourself in a really bad position early in a race and stuff like that. So um, always when you go to the racetrack, it's, it's you're thinking win first, but uh, points are pretty important right now too. All right, we'll go to Jerry and Alex. Jerry Jordan, kicking the tires on that in PRN. Two real quick. Uh, first off, is it bum me out that Eric got the win for the young guys before you did? And uh, second, I ask him the same question about how difficult are the cars to drive? Because we hear some drivers say they need to be more difficult to drive, and then the younger guys and some of the older drivers saying, that, hey, you know, back off of this. I think it's great for Eric to, to get a win. Um, that, that was pretty cool. Obviously, I wish I got a win first, but that's just uh, kind of the, the way things go sometimes. As far as the cars, are you talking speedway racing or everywhere? I think my car has been pretty difficult to drive all year, but um, I, I think Kyle Busch's and Kevin Harvick's probably haven't been so difficult. But uh, I think it's a pretty good mix right now. Um, the aero stuff's always tough to get around. You can't unlearn what we've learned and, and make the racing better by just taking all that stuff away. We, we still have that knowledge and we're going to use that aero grip everywhere we go. So that's definitely a, a tough thing to get around when it comes to racing, but I think the cars are, are pretty hard to drive. At least mine is. Uh, I'll let you know if it gets too easy, though, for sure. <laughs> all right, Alex. Hey, Alex. Uh, Alex Gray from the Grueling Truth Radio Network. So you've driven this track before and after the repave. Um, what are your thoughts on how different the track has been? What do you prefer? And just how do you feel of it in general? Yeah, it was one of my favorite tracks before they paved it, just because you could move around so much and it had so much character with all the bumps. I've only been here in a wheel force car since they paved it, so that's kind of skewed, I guess, a little bit. It's you, You're running 90% in a wheel force car, not really pushing it, especially at a place like here where it's hard to catch a car. So. I don't really know. I'm pretty anxious to get on the racetrack and try to get my feet under me. Uh, I, I think we can still be really strong here. The repaves have been a little rough on us this year, but we were good at Texas. Uh, other than that, the repaves would have been pretty pretty bad, but I don't know. We'll just uh, wait and see. I'd, I'd say later today probably be a, a better time to ask that question because I just don't really have much info yet. All right, Gary, go ahead. Um, Gary Graves, Associated Press. In your urgency to, to, to make the playoff, uh, how much does a track like this add to it in terms of trying to learn something with a lot of mile and a half tracks in, in the playoff? 
Yeah, you, you would think a, a mile and a half track would give you um, a bunch of opportunities to learn for, for other mile and a halfs in the playoffs, but this place is so different than anywhere else we go. It's pretty unique. Um, it and Texas are, are kind of similar now with the way they've changed things, but other than that, I, I mean, three and four is, is really different. One and two is kind of a normal mile and a half corner, but um, it, it's just really different. So. Obviously, if we, we find something that works really well here, it might work really well at other places, but the there's such a big split in the corners and such a high grip level from, from the new pavement, it's really hard to, uh, to translate that to, to like an old wore out place that we go. Honestly, I would just say Texas. It, since they reconfigured Texas, it's pretty similar to this. Um, you know, a, a much slower um, entry to one. I guess that would be your entry to three here. It's kind of backwards, but um, Texas still has way more banking than this place does. So <laughs> there's not really a, anywhere we go that, that's quite as flat as it is into three here. So that, um, that just proposes a, a big challenge for, for drivers not overshooting that entry and, and getting the car to work right on both ends of the racetrack because there's so much banking in one and two. So it's a big compromise. Um, you see that at a place like Pocono, compromising your setup for different corners. So there's a little bit of similarity there, but um, I don't know. I, I guess there's a couple places that we do that for sure. All right, we're gonna go to Destin and then I'm gonna come back over to Allie. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, how significant will side drafting be here, particularly with potentially, I guess, a lane and a half, if that? And if somebody's coming up on you, how easy is it to, to, to shake them off? Uh, how much trouble could that present this weekend? Yeah, it's going to be really hard to run side by side here, obviously, just with the groove being so narrow. So uh, when somebody gets down on your door, it's going to make the car be a handful to drive. So. Um, as far as holding somebody off behind you, it, it's so narrow, it's pretty easy to block the air. And once you block that air, they have to be a good bit better than you to, to get past you. I mean, we saw last night in the truck race, uh, Friesen couldn't even get, I mean, 10 truck lengths behind him. So, um, you know, it was, uh, that was really interesting. I, I think that's just kind of the way a, a narrow racetrack works. When you can't move around to get clean air, it's, it's hard to, to make that pass when you're not much better than the guy in front of you. Hi, Allie Davis at NASCAR.com. So you said obviously that turn three, you don't want to overshoot it, but you also don't have much experience with the repavement. How do you go into a turn that, you know, a lot of guys clearly say is underrated, you know, is one of the most difficult ones leading into the playoffs? Yeah, luckily for me, we have the simulator and uh, a lot of really good tools at, uh, at Chevy with Pratt & Miller and at HMS that, that I can use to watch footage and, and run the sim and stuff like that to kind of get me an idea of, of where I need to lift and, and all that before I get here. So hopefully that's helped. Um, we, we spent half a day in the simulator running here, so um, hopefully that'll, that'll help. But if I go out and crash on the first lap, I guess, uh, I guess that wouldn't be good either. But um, you know, it, it's tough. We go to a lot of places, or I've gone to a lot of places this year that I haven't seen since 2015. So it's kind of been like going to a place for the first time just because it's been so long. So I've just kind of tried to um, watch as much footage and run the sim as much as I can and, and stuff like that just to be the most prepared I can when I get here. All right, we're going to Lee and then take our final question up front. Go ahead. Lee Spencer, Racing Boys. So you've had three consecutive top tens. You've led the Hendrick contingent the last couple of races. Do you feel like you and Ives have kind of settled into a, a, a routine by now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, working with Greg is a, a ton of fun. I've started to understand his riddles a little bit, which is really a pretty big achievement in my book. But uh, no, it's been great working with him. I think we've been pretty solid. We finally seem to put races all the way together the last three weeks, not have any big mistakes and be finished. We've finished where we've deserved to finish. I feel like Daytona is kind of whatever, but other than that, I mean, Sonoma and, Ch and Chicago, we finished pretty well. That's how we deserved and, and how we ran. So, um, you know, we've been making cars better throughout the course of a race too, which is kind of something we struggle to do to start the year. Um, making cars better throughout qualifying, which is also something we struggle to do to start the year. So, if we can just continue to get better every week, I think we can be a contender by the end of the year. It just, uh, 
it's been a long, slow process to, to kind of catch up from where we started the year, but we're definitely getting there. And, and I, I doubt you have a dispensation to run the midget race at Indy or the midget race in, at the uh, Gateway Nationals, but do you plan on, on fielding cars at either one of those events? I wish I could get one ready for Indy. Um, it's both cars are torn all the way apart and, and won't be ready. Uh, I actually I have been working on it all week and just not really doable. So hopefully uh, hopefully CJ gets an invite to the Gateway race and, and we can go run there. Um, they're pretty stingy with their invites, but hopefully he uh, he gets one. I keep telling him he needs to do whatever he, he can to get that because I, I would like to be a part of that. But we're going to go to Turkey Night and uh, to Coin and Chili Bowl. So it'll be fun. I'm going to run Chili Bowl, which will be cool. Uh, excited to get back in one. It's been been a while, so it'll be fun. All right, microphone up front, please. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Steve Conley, WQIO Radio. Alex, um, going back to last week, and you mentioned blocking and holding off runs here, uh, much different at Daytona last week. Brad Keselowski had some very harsh words for drivers in regards to blocking. We've still got Talladega coming up this season and in the chase. Your thoughts on the level of blocking that drivers are doing now, especially from uh, younger drivers that are coming in that are more aggressive in the field? I think anybody that leads a speedway race is super aggressive and you have to block. I mean, if, if you don't block, you just lose the lead instantly. So it's the box we've been put in with the rules package and that's, that's how you have to p position yourself up front to be successful in those races. I mean, you look, the 17 was obviously the most aggressive guy last week, but he, won two stages pretty handily and ran up front all all night until he got caught up in a wreck so obviously that aggression breeds success so that that's just what you have to do i mean brad's super aggressive when he runs up front too um that's just kind of the way plate racing is all right alex thank you for your time and we wish you the best of luck this weekend